Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a comedy, fantasy, and horror film called Little Evil. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Believing he's finally found the love of his life, Gary Bloom decides to marry Samantha and eventually moves in with her. Of course, that means Gary also has to win the heart of Samantha's 5-year-old son, Lucas. However, Lucas doesn't really like his stepfather, and when Gary shows him the cart he bought for him, the boy just walks away while casually holding some earthworms. Meanwhile, Samantha tells Gary not to get discouraged, so he assures her he'll do everything he can to be close to Lucas. Moments later, Gary cooks breakfast while watching the morning news, where Reverend Gospel talks about the end of the world. Then, Samantha asks Gary to take Lucas to school because she has some errands to run. In the car, Gary tries to strike up a conversation with Lucas, but the boy is just not interested. After that, Gary receives a call from their wedding videographer, Carl, who tells him he needs to see something. Carl says something unusual is in their video, but Gary doesn't want to see it anymore and just asks him to destroy it. Then, they finally arrive at school, and Lucas leaves without even saying goodbye to Gary. At work, Gary's friend, Al, tells him she heard about what happened at their wedding and says she's happy she didn't come. She then invites Gary to therapy, which is kind of like a group thing for stepdads, but he politely refuses. At the same time, Gary finds a client who wants to buy a property he's selling, an old nunnery. So, Gary drives to the nunnery and meets with Reverend Gospel, remembering him from the news that morning. Gary then shows his client around, and as the Reverend asks how much he'll have to pay for the nunnery, he also starts talking about the end of the world. Meanwhile, Gary receives a call from Samantha, learning that Lucas got into trouble at school. After that, Reverend Gospel immediately buys the nunnery and Gary quickly leaves to pick up Lucas. Upon arriving at school, Gary is escorted by two cops to the principal's office. There, he talks to Principal Chandler and Dr. Farrow, the school psychiatrist. After answering a few questions about his relationship with Lucas, Gary learns that his stepson spoke out of turn in class and told his teacher, Mrs. Dieter, to go to hell. Mrs. Dieter then poured lye on her face and jumped out the window, impaling herself on the fence. The principal clarifies that they're not blaming Lucas for what happened, but after going through his file, they've learned that the kid has a habit of pushing people over the edge. So, Principal Chandler decides to suspend Lucas for a week while Dr. Farrow recommends group therapy for Gary. At home, Samantha worries that no one will come to Lucas' birthday party anymore because of what happened. Also, she thinks it's unfair that the principal singled out Lucas, saying the teacher shouldn't be teaching if she's that fragile. Then, Gary informs Samantha that the school psychiatrist wants him to go to therapy, and she thinks it's a good idea since he's been having a hard time communicating with Lucas. However, Gary says it's not about him and suggests there might be something wrong with the boy, which upsets Samantha. Moments later, Gary apologizes to Samantha for what he said. However, Samantha feels bad because Lucas has already been through so much and thinks he just needs a positive male role model. Unfortunately, Lucas hated all of Samantha's ex-boyfriends, and Samantha can't believe that one of them died in a horrible mulching accident. Gary then comforts his wife, so Samantha tells him he just needs to be on Lucas' side. Because of that, Gary reminds Samantha that when he made a commitment to her, he also made a commitment to Lucas. Then, Gary says he'll go upstairs to talk to the boy, and before he leaves, Samantha tells him he'll be a great dad. Upstairs, Gary finds Lucas in front of the television. Gary then tries to talk to him, but the boy suddenly takes out a puppet and speaks in a demonic voice, telling him to get out. Scared, Gary immediately leaves the room and finds Samantha outside, telling her Lucas wants some alone time with his goat puppet, Reroy. The next day, Gary attends therapy with his fellow stepdads, including Al. Gary is hesitant to talk at first, but he eventually shares with them that he's having a hard time connecting with his stepson. At the same time, Gary says they're having a party for Lucas' sixth birthday. The therapist then asks Gary if he's having some problems with his wife too, since he doesn't get along with Lucas, but Gary assures them they're fine. However, one of the stepdads, Victor, comments that the mother will always side with the son, leaving Gary a bit worried. After that, Gary continues to talk about Lucas, implying that the kid is evil. So, the therapist advises Gary to do something on Lucas' birthday, telling him it could be a breakthrough for them both. Everybody tries to have a great time during the party, but Lucas chooses to be alone on the swing. Moments later, while having a drink, the stepdads advise Gary to find out anything about Lucas' father. Then, Gary notices that Lucas is watching the clown, and it isn't long before the performer accidentally sets himself on fire. Luckily, he quickly manages to extinguish the flames by jumping into an inflatable pool. However, when Gary tries to give him some extra cash for what happened, the clown grabs his arm and tells him Lucas made him do it. After the incident, Gary visits Carl and sees the video he's been talking about. In the footage, the preacher presiding over the ceremony can be heard speaking in tongues. Then, Carl slows down the video and plays it in reverse, 
revealing that the preacher was actually asking Gary to protect the child come hellfire or brimstone. As if that isn't enough, when a tornado struck at the wedding, it can be seen that Lucas was unharmed and not even affected at all. Bothered, Carl did some research and learned that a religious group called Doomsday Cult believes that a child will rise up from hell to rule mankind and bring on the world's end. Carl thinks that child is Lucas, but Gary doesn't believe a word he says. So, Carl reveals that every guy Samantha dated is dead, except for one, showing him the news clippings detailing how they died. Then, when Gary sees that one of the guys died in a freak mulching accident, he starts to become suspicious. After that, Carl tells Gary where to find Gabriel, Samantha's surviving ex-boyfriend, telling him to give him a call so they can visit the guy. That night, Gary gets startled when he finds Lucas sitting on top of the table. However, Gary isn't really in the mood to talk, so he just leaves him alone and lets him call her in the dark. Meanwhile, Samantha talks to Child Protective Services and informs Gary they had calls from parents complaining about a dangerous clown at Lucas's party. Then, when Samantha learns that Gary found the clown on the internet, she tells him he has to be careful when making decisions, especially now that he's already a parent. After that, Samantha says Wendy, Al's wife, is coming with Child Protective Services the following day and she asks Gary to be there too. Moments later, Gary shares with Samantha what the preacher actually said at their wedding. However, Samantha only finds it funny, unsure whether to believe Gary or not. Then, Gary asks about Lucas's biological father, but Samantha gets defensive and refuses to talk about the man. After that, Samantha gives Gary a massage and reveals how she got pregnant with Lucas, saying he was conceived when she joined the cult when she was younger. The cult members performed the ritual and did some chanting, and Samantha left after the ceremony, never looking back. Meanwhile, Gary can't believe what he just heard, but their conversation is cut short when Lucas suddenly comes into the room. Samantha then lets the kids sleep with them and Gary feels uncomfortable as Lucas stares at him. Later that night, Lucas grunts and mumbles while having a dream, leaving Gary with no choice but to get up and take some sleeping pills. However, he suddenly finds earthworms in his hands, and one even starts to come out of his nose. He then pulls it out with a tweezer, but it isn't long before more worms come out. Fortunately, it's just a nightmare, so Gary just tries to ignore it. Worried, Gary shares his concerns with Al, telling her Lucas might have caused the tornado at the wedding. However, Al doesn't really take Gary seriously, but she still accompanies him to the church, where Gabriel is self-flagellating in the basement. Although he's hesitant, Gary introduces himself and asks Gabriel about Samantha and Lucas, but the man suddenly gets upset and whips himself even harder. Then, Gabriel talks about the world's end and instructs Gary to travel to the old marketplace in the city of Bethlehem, telling him to seek out a demon hunter named Gozamel. After that, Gabriel recites a passage from the Bible and says Lucas is the Antichrist. Moments later, Gary and Al go to a bar and talk about what to do with Lucas. Al advises Gary to get a divorce, but that is just not an option for him. Then, they see on the news that Reverence Gospel's followers in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania are stocking up on canned goods, and Gary remembers that he's the guy who bought the nunnery. At the same time, Gary and Al realize they will find Gozumel in Pennsylvania. With no time to waste, Al and Gary immediately go to Bethlehem and search for Gozumel, finding him in a surplus shop. Gary then tells Gozumel everything Lucas has done, but the demon hunter thinks he's just an ordinary kid. Still, Gozumel asks when the boy's birthday is, so Gary explains that his real birthday is on the 6th of June, but they chose to celebrate early. To make things worse, Gozumel learns that Lucas is turning 6 on his birthday, and that's when he realizes that he really is the Antichrist. So, Gozumel takes Gary and Al to his van and informs them they need to stab Lucas in the heart with the Knife of Destiny on hollowed ground. They have to do it by 6pm on the 6th of June and Gozumel instructs Gary to get the knife from his drawer. However, Gary is against the idea of stabbing Lucas or hurting him in any way, but Gozumel makes it clear that killing Lucas is the only solution to their problem. Unfortunately, they get into an accident after avoiding a man in the middle of the road. Then, seeing that Gozumel crashed through the windshield, Gary and Al immediately look for him. Moments later, they find the demon hunter, but he's already dying. Despite being in pain, Gozumel tells Gary that Lucas' destiny is now in his hands, and when the time is nigh, he'll get a sign from above. Gozumel then dies, so Gary immediately looks for a way out of that cornfield while Al takes the knife from the demon hunter. Moments later, Gary and Al finally make it home. They then find Lucas on the swing, and Al takes that as her cue to leave. Still, she makes sure to give the knife to Gary, but Lucas is already gone when he turns around. Frightened, Gary cautiously enters the house, only to be called by his wife. Samantha is talking to Wendy and Miss Shaylock from Child Protective Services, and together, they discuss Gary's relationship with Lucas. Then, Samantha tells Gary to tuck Lucas in bed, and they get into a small argument because Gary swears he saw the boy outside. Upstairs, Gary turns on the lights in the hallway, but they suddenly go out. He then takes the flashlight hanging on the wall and looks for Lucas, finding his room in disarray. 
At the same time, he sees the word Erut Par written on the ceiling, and he gets scared when one of Lucas's toys unexpectedly turns on. So, Gary takes out its batteries, but the toy suddenly speaks in a deep, distorted voice, sending him running for the door. However, the door is locked, so Gary shouts for help. Unfortunately, the women downstairs don't realize that Gary's actually in trouble. Meanwhile, Lucas finally comes out of hiding and scares Gary, forcing him to hide in the bathroom. There, he sees the word Erut Par again, but once he looks in the mirror, he realizes that the word Rapture is just spelled backward. Then, the door handle slowly detaches from the door and when Gary looks through the hole, Lucas once again scares him with his goat puppet. Startled, Gary accidentally hits his head on the bathtub and loses consciousness, and Lucas takes the knife from him before dragging his body away. On the other hand, the women continue to talk about Lucas, unaware that the boy is taking his stepfather's body outside. After putting Gary in a huge box, Lucas decides to bury him. Then, minutes later, Samantha answers Gary's call after seeing Miss Shaylock and Wendy out, learning that Lucas just buried him in the backyard. Shocked, Samantha immediately takes a shovel and digs up Gary who tells her he wants a divorce. But Samantha asks Gary not to overreact, telling him children act out because they don't know how to express their emotions. However, Gary doesn't think that's the case with Lucas, so he tells Samantha the boy is the Antichrist. He then tries to explain himself, but Samantha refuses to listen and just returns to the house with her son. After that, Gary asks Samantha to let him take Lucas to King Willie's water park, which was blessed by the Pope, intending to drown the boy. However, instead of immediately killing Lucas, Gary ends up bonding with him. Moments later, Lucas decides he wants to try the big slide, so Gary puts his floaties on him, which he filled with sand so that the kid won't float. Then, Lucas quickly goes down the slide, leaving Gary panicking and praying to God, asking for a sign, because he doesn't know what to do. Surprisingly, a jet spells the word love in the sky, so Gary follows Lucas and saves him from drowning, promising he won't ever take his eyes off his stepson again. Once they leave the water park, Gary apologizes to Lucas for losing his puppet. At the same time, they both apologize for trying to kill each other. Then, Gary tells Lucas he doesn't care who his father is, and the boy says his real dad talks to him through the television and his toys, adding that he wants full custody. Upon hearing that, Gary assures his stepson he won't let that happen, but their conversation is interrupted when Gary receives an Amber Alert for Lucas. The cops immediately arrest Gary, and shortly after, Miss Shaylock, who is revealed to be a follower of Reverend Gospel, arrives and takes the boy. After that, Gary immediately calls Samantha and informs her of the situation, but Reverend Gospel kidnaps her and orders one of his men to look for the Knife of Destiny. Desperate to escape, Gary asks a homeless man to open the car door for him. Then, once he gets out and runs away, he doesn't hear the man tell him to save the child because that's their only hope. Moments later, Gary reaches Al's house and asks for her help, and after doing some research, they learn that Lucas is actually a portal to Satan. They also discover that the portal will open by killing Lucas, and if Satan enters his body, the end of the world will ensue. Now, it finally dawns on Gary that Reverend Gospel bought the nunnery because he plans to sacrifice Lucas there and open up the doors of hell. Determined to help Gary save Lucas, Al calls the other stepdads before heading to the nunnery. However, several cops try to stop them, but the stepdads still manage to get away in their monster truck. Meanwhile, the cult prepares for the ritual that will end the world, and the Reverend taunts Samantha for running away from him before. Then, Reverend Gospel starts the ceremony as Lucas lies on a sacrificial table, tied up and unable to escape. Eventually, the stepdads arrive at the nunnery and wear some masks and cloaks to blend in with the other cult members. Gary then throws a baseball at Reverend Gospel just as he's about to stab Lucas, and he scolds the cult members for trying to kill a boy. Unfortunately, Satan starts taking control of Lucas's body, and as the portal opens, he almost falls into it. Thankfully, Gary manages to grab him while he holds onto the table, but Lucas tells him to let him go. Despite that, Gary refuses to let go of his stepson, angering Satan and causing him to wreak havoc on the nunnery. However, when Satan realizes Gary will fight for Lucas until the end, he finally decides to stop and free them. On the other hand, Samantha knocks Reverend Gospel in the portal where he tries to attack Lucas. A few weeks later, Gary and Lucas join the Jubilee Derby race and they enjoy their time as father and son. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.